That is exactly right, Ted. In fact, it's called Pasenka. I'm learning it's an ancient art form. Donna is with me this morning. And you know, I find this absolutely fascinating that there's a story behind every egg, every color, every shape. Donna, walk us through some examples of that. Well, this is a very common um, design for the Pasenka egg. Here you have white, which symbolizes purity. Yellow typically is for the perpetuation of the family. Orange for endurance, green for hope, red for passion. And because we have the eternity band, this is an eternal blessing. This is the things that we want for you. Pine here is for strength, and this closed rose here is often for love and family. Isn't that lovely? I love this. This is wonderful. Let's take another example. There's so many different kinds. This again is a common pattern. You've got here actually rooster comb for masculinity, a rake for a good harvest. You've got flowers for beauty. Again, red for passion, orange for endurance, yellow for family, green for hope. Oh, this is wonderful. So what Donna was telling me too is that so when you give someone one of these eggs, you're really sending them a message. You're giving them a blessing. Yes. You're writing them a message of love and hope and good things, good wishes. So this brings me to the idea of what happens if you accidentally drop an egg? What do you do? If you break an egg, you do not throw it out. You need to bury it. And I would suggest burying it as close to your home as possible so that blessing and those good wishes stay with you. Isn't that neat? I think that is so interesting. And what you were saying too is that there's all different kinds of traditions as well. There is. Um, you've, you've got um, some very non-traditional designs. Sure. This was for a specific couple who were this, Chinese. Yes, and they wanted to celebrate the birth of their daughter and the birth of their son. So you can go as um, creative as you want. Um, you can stick to a more traditional pattern here as you can see. Right. And you can also stay with a, a trapillion design. Wonderful. Now this egg, for example, just shows how incredibly intricate these designs are. And Donna was telling me too that you actually have to breathe in a certain way. You do want to be able to control your breathing because you are making very fine lines. This is actually done, these lines are done with an extra fine kiska. So this is a goose egg. So as you're making your lines, you want to make sure you're controlling your breathing so that your lines aren't wobbly. You want them nice and straight and consistent. So there's a little bit of technique in there as well. A little, a lot. My <laughs> goodness, breathing, elbow movements, amazing. So, yeah. so we've got a whole bunch of tools as well, which we'll talk yes. about in our next segments. We're going to sit down and we're going to start learning how to do this. And there's a whole bunch of tools involved. We'll tell you all about that next, guys.